Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, we have uh, Lori Barth on the show, and we wore matching outfits. <laughs> so, um, Not planned. <laughs> so, Lori, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, happy to be here. Um, so today... To get our like, video up so I can see messages. Okay, cool. Okay, no awesome. So I, uh, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on, and it sounds like we've got a pretty fun project going here. So we are going to take a section of your Gatsby site, um, and we're going to turn it into a theme, right? Yes, we are. And uh, I feel like everyone should feel very fancy because this is my private repo, like mess with my personal <laughs> site and do everything wrong, just to, like try things out. So this code is not pretty and I'm showing it to you. So we enjoy that. And don't make fun of it too much. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you taking us into your uh, into your private sanctum of of. Yeah, like, the, the innards of uh, maybe I should have refactored this, but it's a personal site and who has time for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we start looking at code, do you want to give a quick intro of, of, you know, an overview of who you are, what you do, all that good stuff? Sure. Sure. So I'm Lori. Hi. Um, you may know me as Lori on tech on Twitter. That's probably the most like interactive community stuff that I do. Um, I work for 10 Mile Square Technologies. We are a small consulting firm in the DC area. Um, and I kind of work on whatever because it's whatever our clients need me to learn and do. Um, and I do a lot of speaking and some blogging and now some egghead videos. And so about a year ago, maybe a little more, I made a personal site um, and I just kind of throw up stuff that I'm working on and resources that I've made and content I've created that people might want to check out. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, cool. So uh, there's a question in the chat about the how to convert time zones. Um, mm. There's a website that I forget. Do you do you have a, a good like website that you like for for converting time zones? There's one that I that I love that like. Shows. <laughs> I wish so I so true story. I'm terrible at converting time zones, especially if they're short. So I landed in Kansas City for a conference a few weeks ago. And in my brain, like it's an hour different, so it's not different. And therefore all of my plans for the evening were messed up as soon as I landed and realized it was a completely different time than I thought it would be when I landed. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm a terrible person to ask this question to, basically. <laughs> yeah, I also have a lot of problems. I realized the other day I, I still had my watch on Eastern time. And nice. I hadn't been in Eastern time for three weeks <laughs> yeah, my best my best like equivalent of that is not realizing for multiple days that my uh twitter name still says i'm at a conference that i left like a week ago <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh oh man hey yeah all right so we've got we've got a lot of people joining we've got um we've got ben in the chat oh and ben just subscribed so now he's got access to my my bear emoji, which is a lot of fun. The bear emoji is um, great. Okay. Should we start writing some code, do you think? Sure. Let's, okay. <laughs> let's you know, give the people what they asked for. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. So um, do you want to give us just a quick overview of maybe we can start by looking at the site and then we can sure. go into how you're, you're getting that on the site? Sure. So this is one of the pages of my site. It's the speaking site or speaking page. Wow. I can talk this morning, this afternoon. What day is it? What time is it? Um, Where am I? <laughs> that follows our theme of time zones, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. it's got a header and it's got this like hero image. Um, but kind of the, the meat of it is down here. It's this grid layout um, where I have all of my speaking appearances. And these, all of these like uh, cities, which was Jason's idea, fun fact. Um, all of these cities are future sites. So I'm giving two talks in Germany in November and I'll be at Connect Tech in Atlanta. Um, and then podcasts are in here with links to them. And then I have previous stuff. So stuff I've already done um, gets sometimes really blurry, dark images <laughs> of uh, me being there and videos and that kind of stuff. So it goes all the way down. And then even more at the bottom, we have current talks, which is just, you know, if someone sees my site and they want me to speak somewhere, they can see what I'm talking about and what talks I have available. And then cool. it's footer. 
So that's that's the page. Mm -hmm. um, and the code is, it starts with data that's stored in YAML. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. It's got an index, so I know the order of operations just because the format of this is not like really date time stampy. It's just a date. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the year it is, URL. Um, I do a relative path to that image. And then I've got, you know, an array of however many talks, potentially the video. And then depending on if it's a video or podcast, I give it a type. Okay. And then the page itself has this um, speaking query at the bottom. It's doing the hero image directly in this. Again, innards of Lori's like haven't made the hero image a component on this particular page. We'll no, pretend fine. that I did. <laughs> um, but it, it pulls, it uses Gatsby image to pull stuff in. It pulls in the talk array. And then I just have all of these directly in here for the talks. But um, the meat of it is this. It's um, just a loop that iterates through stuff. And then it also iterates through the talks within that. And it shows them in that nice stuff. And then the CSS file is separate. Nice. OK, cool. So yeah, we can definitely uh, take this over and, and turn it into a theme, which I think will be really fun. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do is figure out how we're going to um, develop this site alongside a theme. Um, so what we'll do is we'll actually convert this over to a Yarn workspace. Um, and you can just do this like a level up from the site so you don't have to rewrite all your code or change Git history or anything. Um, so okay. if you just go up to like, just up a folder. Um, okay. Because so, that's not a giant folder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can also, if you want to, uh, so the way that I've done this for other sites that, that already exist is I'll create a new folder called oh, look, Workspace. It's your birthday project. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can take a, a, like, I'll create a site called Workspace or, like, you know, personal site Workspace or something. And okay. then I move the site into that folder. And then I can create okay. another one. And we'll turn that into the... Um, that end of the thing. Okay. So like make a higher level directory and then we're going to move Gatsby Lori on tech into that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Hey, what's up, Jake? How do I deploy a Kubernetes cluster on my calculator? <laughs> Mr. Nime says very carefully. Uh, I believe that is the correct answer. Uh, do you, does everyone like my name site and stuff? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Okay, so PWD. Okay, cool. CD site site stuff. Okay. Will this work? Oh. Hold Thank on. you. Dot slash do. No. No. This is this is yeah. where my like it's, I it's used the to other know way around. how to use terminal. Oh, it's the other way around. Yeah. So like is it then the, that? Well the the first thing that you put in is the thing that you want to move. So this ah. is actually like a really not a good thing to do. <laughs> well wait, wait, I'm sorry. You're telling me I should read the like usage instructions it gave me? <laughs> yeah. I feel like this would be this would be incredible because like we would we would live stream bricking your computer. <laughs> what am I gonna just do? Um, okay, so what what you'll actually want to do is just it put a dot, a just a just a single oh, just dot. A dot. Okay. Oh, no such no file. Such... Fun fact. Hold on. I can do this. So you can just go dot dot to go up. Yeah, a but directory. I already moved it, and then you did. <laughs> I should swear on the live screen. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, and this is how we hack. Get, get, we're, we're just shh. quiet, everyone. I mean, we this didn't. is where I would have started, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was trying to look legit, okay? Cool. Okay. Good job, everyone. Look at us. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't seen the forced aspect ratio option for the fluid image. Um, so that is actually now in the Gatsby image tutorial because it may or may not have been written by yours truly. So go nice. check it out. It talks about aspect image ratio, which is really a nice trick. I didn't know you'd done that. That's awesome. Thanks, Marcy. 
She helped me out. She's the best. She um, is okay. Best. So. Okay. So we're now, now a level higher. <laughs> yes. So uh, we're going to open that in, uh, in VS Code. Oh, right. Hold on. Best hack. <laughs> okay. Except it did actually open the thing I wanted it to open. Of course it didn't. I needed to do it another way. Okay. It's cool. Keep talking. We'll get there. Okay. So uh, open site and stuff. Open site and stuff? Yeah. So open a level to... higher? Yeah. Right. Because that's why we did all of this. Logic. Oh, okay, cool. Yay. We're all good. right. Also, so now, because I want to. Purple. Yes. <laughs> awesome. It's Gatsby. Um, We've got to theme it. <laughs> also, so, that is John Papa's Peacock plugin if you want to play around with fun colors so you don't confuse your IDE windows. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that was a thing. Um, oh, it's a great thing. So let's add a new folder um, outside okay. of the Gatsby Lorient tech. Outside, okay. Mm -hmm. And this one can be called, um, well, I would probably just name it like the theme. So Gatsby theme, uh, speaking YAML probably, since you're gonna be pulling yeah. from YAML. That seems cool. And then drag that outside of the Gatsby Lorient tech. Oh, why did that not? No, why did that not happen? I put it at the tallest, tallest eh, highest level. Wow. This is Jeez. fun. Is it just, it's not going to do it, is it? It's fine. I got this. And so that one then we need to initialize as a um, a package. So like I usually will just do like yarn init dash y. Um, okay. And that sets up a package JSON. So move specific directory or the whole move, project? Move into that folder. So the Gatsby theme okay. speaking. Okay. And then do yarn init dash y. And so now if you look in there, you'll see a package JSON. And cool. it's just kind of initialized it with some basic stuff. So we need to add a couple things to make sure that this actually works. So first, you're going to want to add your author info. Okay. And it should, I think it'll help you autocomplete. Yeah. And then... Um, cool. And then uh, next down, do keywords. I think it's keywords. Checking yep. this while you talk. Um, the keywords should be Gatsby, Gatsby dash plugin, and Gatsby dash theme. And that's so that it actually gets picked up in the um, the plugin showcase on our website. Oh, cool. Sorry, you said Gatsby, Gatsby dash plugin, and Gatsby dash Gats theme. theme. Everyone should do the theme jam. Yeah, oh. we got like. <laughs> Two days left if you want to want to put a theme in. Um, we're super excited about it. You know, it's a way for us to give people a bunch of swag. And um, we, we had Maggie Appleton do some custom illustrations. So we're uh, everybody her. who everybody who submits something is getting free swag, which we're super excited about. And then we're going to take a couple people out of the community and fly them to London for Gatsby Days in September, which we're super excited about. Look at her pretty like things that she draws. That's I have stickers of them and they're all gorgeous. Um, okay, so we have, oh nice, Ben put a, th ben put a theme in, so that's awesome. Um, I noticed that we're up to, as of this morning, like 64, 65 themes in the, uh, in the ecosystem, which is just awesome, like so cool to see, because I think as of July 1st, we had like two. So <laughs> it's been really, really cool to see how many people are creating <laughs> things and, and uh, yeah, putting no, stuff that's out awesome. there. Um, okay, so with this, we are pretty much ready. Um, so now we're going to create a yarn workspace. And so the way that the yarn workspaces work is that in the root of your directory, you're going to create a package.json. 
And this time we're not going to do it with, um, we're not going to do it with yarn and it. You just like, just, you can just do like touch package JSON. Shh. Again, things people are going to judge damn. me for, but it's fine because it works. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> do you, if you just do the same thing, but with touch instead of nano, that just creates it and doesn't open it or anything. Shh. I was looking so impressive with my terminal minus the whole finder hack. It's fine. Um, and then if we go back into VS Code, uh -huh. we can, um, yeah, in here. So with this one, uh, it's an object, and we're yep. going to mark it as private, true. So private's quoted, true is not. That makes sense. There we go. And then uh, on the next line, we're going to add the workspaces key. And uh, that is an array. And we're going to add both folder names. So Gatsby Lorian Tech and Gatsby Theme Speaking YAML. Woohoo. OK. So in your terminal now, if you run yarn workspaces info. Inside site and stuff. Yeah. I assume. Or really anywhere inside this project now. Okay. So now we can see both of these themes exist. They are being picked up by yarn workspaces or both uh, projects, I mean. And so now we can actually like develop inside of your uh, Lorian tech site while mm -hmm. using the local uh, speaking theme which means it, basically it's just a way for us to do local development without having to publish the work in progress theme so you can download it. It, short, it shortcuts the Helpful. whole process. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then to use it, we need to uh, make sure that it can be installed. So if we look at the package JSON of the theme, mm -hmm. it says that the main file is index.js, which means that that needs to exist or Node won't be able to resolve it. So um, yeah, which in that doesn't. folder. You just create index.js and you can just add a comment. Um, this is where I would usually put a boop in. Yeah, that also. <laughs> Incoming boop. <laughs> oh, you um, said boop. I said boot. I thought that was some also, fancy thing that I didn't know. Also boot. Um, no, this is, <laughs> yeah, you can you can just put whatever you want in here. So this all this, all this file is for is so that when Node tries to resolve the package, it can find something. Um, so, <laughs> exactly, that's, that's exactly what it should be. Um, and so with that being said, now we can actually install the theme into the Gatsby site. So um, with Yarn Workspaces, what I would do is go into your Gatsby Lorian tech. Okay. And in your package.json, it looks like your uh, site is still called Gatsby Starter Default. I would just rename it to like site or something. Okay, I definitely changed this a bit ago. Maybe I like never committed that. Whoops. Sorry, what do you want me to change it to? Anything. It can be site or something. Um, and so now that's the name that you're going to use for workspaces. So um, when you... <laughs> <laughs> cool. So now uh, you can do yarn workspace Lorian Sorry, tech. <laughs> oh, he's going to be so mad. <laughs> Um, so what am I doing? Yarn something, Lorian Tech? Yeah, so in the in the command line now, we're going to install the theme. Yeah. So okay. uh, the, the way that it works is yarn, workspace, package name, and then command. So we're going to do yarn, workspace, Lorian Tech, add, and then the theme name. So uh, Gatsby theme speaking YAML. And since it's not published, we're going to do at star. And that will cause it to install the uh, the local version. So with no space. Like at star? Well, yeah, with no space. So basically what we're saying is um, install this oh, package at Everything. any version. Yeah, got it. So go, run. Mm -hmm. Yay. Also, for anyone who's watching, I'm going to have to go back and watch myself. Because while I'm doing this, I'm like not, I'm just listening. I'm like, <laughs> go. I wonder if the status on GitHub were built with Gatsby and stuff. Kyle's name is the author. I mean, probably a lot. I yeah. I I'm curious if it would be like 
the majority of them. Who wants to do that scraper project? (laughs) Yeah, Kyle, Kyle's like running. He's like cornered the personal website consulting market here. He's like, he's built everything. And what'll be really interesting is like in the future when the the digital archaeologists are are digging through the internet, they'll be like, man, this <laughs> be like who Kyle was built this dude? A lot of websites. <laughs> this is not coding hour. This is just comedy hour with Jason and Lori. So <laughs> thanks for checking in. Um, ninety k. There you go. You're on it. Co- scrape it. I want to know. <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> Okay. And then at so, me to tell me, and then I'll, you know, feel less embarrassed that I swear, <laughs> I swear I changed that at one point. I think, you know what? I'm realizing I changed the config and oh. I changed the, is it the header? No. What has the SEO in it? Data. No. Hold on. Pages. Oh, just the Gatsby config. No, I have that, but there's also something else. Index? Mm. Yeah, here. Index, where oh. like you've got a site title. Oh, that's so, a place to put that. Yeah, I don't know. I messed stuff up, but like it still works, so shh. Yeah, that's, I mean, the site looks great. No one, no one knows. <laughs> hey, someone asked me if I was pulling in my egghead videos using a plugin. No, that is manual effort, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a working site. And if you run Yarn Workspaces Info again, what we'll see is that the um, the site should now have the workspace dependency of the theme. So that means and that as we yes. add things, we can actually do stuff with this theme. Um, at the moment, the theme doesn't do anything, so we can install it into the um, into the site through the Gatsby config, and nothing will happen, and that's okay. So um, let's go ahead and do that so that we don't forget to do it later. Yep is definitely what I would forget. So is it just like a regular <laughs> just, plugin yep. and it just Any gets old plug-in. like that? Yep. And eventually what we'll do is we'll lift stuff out like the the transformer YAML and things. We're going to pull those across. Um, right. So that they can run in the theme. Yeah, exactly. So what we want to do then is we want to start looking at what is in the Gatsby config that's exclusive to the speaking theme. And that's going to come out of your site and go into the theme. Is it bad that the answer is nothing is exclusive? Well, that's okay. We can we can duplicate what needs we'll to just go pretend. across. Pretend. Yeah. So um, so things that I know are used: Gatsby source file system pointing you not to assets but to source slash data because that's how it figures out the relative path of the image and the YAML. Mm-hmm. Um. And using um, Transformer YAML and Transformer Sharp, which is mm-hmm. the requirements in order to use Gatsby Image. So those three things right. are all used. Okay, perfect. So then we're going to go into the command line and we're going to install all of those plugins into the theme. So Yarn Workspace, Gatsby Theme, Speaking YAML. Why is that so long? <laughs> so there's you can for convenience give these shorter names like a lot of times I'll just call sites site so that I can do yarn yeah. workspace site add um, mm-hmm. but with the themes the problem is is that that's what it's going to get published as and I never I will I know I will forget so if I call it like theme I'm going to try to publish like the package theme which is going to ob- like there's no way that's not already a thing so then I'm going to get all these complaints and probably end up on a log somewhere so I just type out the long thing um, yeah, but so no, it's, it's the right way to do things. <laughs> so yarn workspace Gatsby's theme speaking YAML, and then we can do add and the name of the packages that we need. And okay, so just all in a row, like spaces yep. in between. Like yeah, just like you would them. add, um, it, like we're basically doing a, a yarn add. We're just running it in this, this, uh, package instead of at the root. So full disclosure, this is real weird syntax for me because I pretty much always use NPM. So. I'm like, oh, What's okay. Happening? So it, yeah, it works almost exactly the same as NPM. Um, the difference I've is used that- it before, but I also broke my entire computer because they clashed at one point. So that was oh, fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a blast. It was like a weird. There was some like weird bug in one. Like the I swear that yarn version was only in production for like five seconds before it was fixed, and yet <laughs> I got it, and it like clashed with everything and broke everything. Okay, cool. 
Um, okay, so now that we've got those, we're gonna create a Gatsby config in the theme. Okay. Oh, in the theme. Yeah. Okay. And then so um, Gatsby config. Yep. I'm gonna use this touch thing forevermore. By the way, it's it's, J it's such a, a nice file, right? Yeah. Okay. And then um, just duplicate the stuff that you use for the, the speaking theme. Um, okay, so we're going to hack for five seconds. Do, 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 do. We don't know, need any of you. I think you might have needed that source YAML, actually. Oh, I need the Oh, no, plugins. that's the theme. So wait, that's I don't my... need the metadata, but I need yeah, the Yeah, you don't need any of that. And I think I do need plugin sharp, You do actually. need sharp because you've got relative images in there. And I don't need any of you. Cool. Okay. Um, I didn't download Sharp, actually. So. Oh, yeah. So go ahead and add that one. And I uh, have apparently had far too much coffee today. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to go download this stuff or one thing. Gatsby plugin sharp. I can type people or CD into that folder. I definitely didn't do that. I forgot to change it back later. Yeah. Remembering which like folder context you're in can be really kind of a pain. And it's, this is why I have so many colors in my terminal people, because like without all this, I don't know where I am. You can open side by side terminals in VS code. You don't have to keep. Yeah, I know. I normally, I'm tabbing lots of, I tab lots of stuff. Um, I forget which tab I'm in. There really is a reason I use this Peacock theme to like remember which terminal window, which IDE window. Uh, but for this live stream, I just felt like it would be annoying to be switching between a bunch of stuff. I honestly probably should be using terminal in VS code, but meh. let's see if we can break stuff while Jason is gone. Anyone who wants me to break something? Absolutely not. No, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so now that you've got this set up, what we should be able to do is actually take the um, the logic out of Gatsby node and okay. move it into there a Gatsby node in your there. theme. Nothing? No. Oh, you did some. Ah, I understand. Okay, cool. So this is cool. <laughs> so what? Um, is that bad? No, 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 it's totally fine. It's totally fine. So um, basically you've got you've got a really interesting setup because you're you're loading everything in the components themselves, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. I yeah, so I have like component like I have straight up pages that are basically yeah. just components. Um and they're they're loading things directly. Yeah. And okay. so I know that eventually I'm gonna have to use this node nonsense when I like host my own blog posts instead of linking out to them. But sure. for now. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, this is totally fine because this is a completely valid use of, of Gatsby. And so what we can do here is we can actually just take this component and move it out to the theme. And then you'll just like be able to thing. import um, not quite all of it because I think you'll still want the um, like the my current talks since that's just kind of like Yeah, text. I'm going to pull all of it and then we're going to delete stuff like we just did. Cool. With the config. That sounds that sounds perfect. Okay, so what do I need? It does, is it going in index? Um, I would put it in source components and then we can re-export it from index to for convenience, but um, okay, just so for- Okay, so make a components folder? Source components. Oh, okay, so- You can do like make their dash P and then you can create them all at once. You can't do that? You, well, you one. need the dash P. Yeah. See, this is this is what happens when you use lots of fun GUI things. <laughs> cool. So now, okay. yeah, now you'll have that folder. Um, okay. And then and you can create. Yeah, and I would call this like whatever you want, speaking or. Speaking.js. That's what's called before. Um. Yeah, that's totally fine. Uh, Mr. Nime, yes. So he, uh, we're being asked, can you export every default export in your components folder from that index.js file? Absolutely, yes. you can. 
Um, that index.js file kind of becomes like an alias. So anything that you want to put out, you can definitely just put it out. Um, so and Lori, what I would are using destructuring, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend here, because it's, um, this is going to be kind of like a, a compositional thing is just yeah. get rid of the layout too, and just export the section. And so cool. now what you're doing is, is kind of a, um, like a true component. So you're only grabbing data that you need. You're using Gatsby you're... as if it were React? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Things um, Lori but... didn't understand when she first created this site. Honestly, this was like two years ago, not one year ago. But... No, no, this is great. Um, but so, yeah, so what's what's really cool here is that, oh, we're going to have to add Gatsby image as a dependency because you're using it here. Oh, right. We have to download it, but we don't have to include it in the config, which always throws me for a loop. I don't know why. Yeah, so... We talk about everything as if it's a plugin, but um, we also have like utility stuff like helpers yeah. and Gatsby images is, is kind of a helper. Um, so it's it doesn't fit the normal mental model. So if you include it in config, nothing bad happens because I definitely did that and included in my initial blog post. And when I went to write the open source docs, um, Marcy actually edited that out. She was like, you don't actually need to do that. I was like, nice. what? <laughs> oh, hey, Chris Biscardi's here. What's up, Chris? Hi, Chris. Now the pressure's really on. <laughs> um, like I okay. said, comedy hour. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with this, now what you can do is, is you, are, um, you are effectively putting in a, what are we doing? So we have a component. So this, this isn't going to work right now because it can't see any of this data. Why not? Because it's not here. Yeah, it it's is. in the site. Oh, but it is. So oh, that's how themes work, right? So the themes are going to resolve from the relative space. So let's take a look at your Gatsby config real quick to make sure that it is using relative. Which can uh, that one? This one. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and drop out the dir name. Okay. And the leading slash. And it's just gonna like whoop. Yeah. So that way it's gonna read from the current. Like wherever it's installed, it'll read from that source directory. Um, okay, so cool. that I'll way, <laughs> that way, what ends up happening is that everything that's in there will um, will get pulled in as like from from the site that it's installed in. So that way, you never have to touch the theme stuff. Um, let's see. Now I need to know how tall Chris Bacardi is. Because apparently people uh, comment on his height. Extraordinarily tall. Um, Chris is like 6'10 or 6'11 or something. He's really tall. What? Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm really short. People don't know this, but I'm really, really short. So Yeah, so I, I don't feel short until I hang out with the Gatsby team because like there are a lot of people on the Gatsby team who are significantly taller than six foot. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, if I stand between them, I'm just very small. Amberly, I round up to be five, three. Okay. That's <laughs> like, that's what we're working with. And my husband's six, two. So I actually had to wear high heels through our first dance at our wedding because the photographer was afraid she wouldn't be able to get us both in the same frame. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Excellent. And then I wore sparkly kids for the rest of it. <laughs> That's extremely good. Very tall man. <laughs> um, okay. So now what Back we've got coding. is right. we, um, so we have a component with your speaking stuff. That component is now living in the theme. So what we're going to do is okay. let's um, export that component from your index. So we'll just kind of grab it out and um, yeah. So Export it from the index or yes. import it into the index? Both. So, um, what, what just happened? So what you can do, this is a shortcut that I love is you can do export and uh -huh. then in curly braces. Yeah. Default as, and whatever you want to call it. So speaking events or something, and this would be okay, the so component name. So it, it can't have a hyphen in it. 
it has to pull it from somewhere, right? Yeah, so dot source component speaking. What's happening? Uh, you need a source directory there. Dot slash source? Yep. Add that slash Blue and slash. cool. That's Why good. Is it mad? And then um, the speaking oh, events is a component that. name. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know things. Also, so now, I definitely wrote an entire post about what all of that nonsense means. If you don't know destructuring or alias thing or any of that, nice. it's, it's a fun read. So that, yeah, so this is great. So basically what we're doing is we're in one command um, importing the speaking component that we just created and then exporting it again as a named export. So exporting yep. as speaking events. Um, we could also like import as a component and then export const speaking events right which is what i would have expected so this is slick i actually haven't seen this before i might have to a append that post with this nonsensical awesomeness yeah 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 so this is super fun um all right also i'm so glad now... everyone's having a good time <laughs> <laughs> oh chris just found your post oh yeah that that's that would be it and yes it is themed to uh to wizard of oz Yes. Okay. And we'll make sure to put that in the show notes as well so that uh, you can find that if you are watching on YouTube later. So you want to try to use this? Yes. Okay. So let's go back into your site. And I'm going to replace all of this nonsense, I assume. Mm hmm. J yeah, yeah. Just the section part that we. Right. Which uh... is kind of unfair because we put that in there, but it's fine. It's fine. We're just going to. Well, Hmm. Okay. So what we really want to happen here is, um, do we need to, should we refactor this a I little can bit fix it so after. that it's okay. Okay. Let's um, just get it working and then we can fix it and show that we could have done it. Okay, cool. So in that case, import speaking events as a named import from, uh, from your theme. Could I have made it the default export of you index could .js? have, but I probably wouldn't. That's fair. Just just because like it, um, and this this one's going to be absolute. So Gatsby theme. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. It's cool, right? Yeah, because it's basically like another project that's just in the that's, same. That's what Yarn yeah. Workspace no, is it. doing. Yeah, I get it. Why is it mad at me? Oh, it's never used. Ha! Huh. Let's use it then. Yep, and now if we try that, that should like just run work. It? Yeah, it should just work. Oh, I need to be in a Gatsby project. That might help. Oh, wait, can I run this whole thing as a Gatsby yarn, project? Because it's got a problem. Yarn Workspace Lori or Gatsby Lori on Tech run develop, or I think just develop. So if I went into Lori on Tech and just ran Gatsby develop, it wouldn't work. Um, it should work. Do you have, uh, did we, do we typo something? Where are we? No, I mean, we're, so we're, we're a level above. Uh-huh. We've got Sight Gatsby and on stuff. tech and we've got Gatsby theme speaking dot YAML. We've got. The, oh, did you theme. rename the site? Oh, you, you, uh, it's just Lori on tech, not Gatsby Lori on tech. Oh, I see what you're saying. Cause it's looking inside. It's not looking. It at the uses the, file. the name field yeah. of package.json. This was the tweet Jason referenced on stream last time the height difference came up. I'm going to have to click on that. Do it. We, I mean, we're just waiting for, for Gatsby to fire up now. So yeah, this is when we have our, um, our, our light, our sword battles, right? Where it's just, <laughs> ah, no, I can't. That's weird. Fun fact. I'm doing this on my phone. Um, not, not everyone has dual monitors at home. So in mind when you're interacting with people. <laughs> okay. What happened? It doesn't like something. What doesn't it like? Doesn't import Cannot read React property. from React. Cannot read property all speaking YAML of undefined. See, this is what I was afraid of. Aha. So, I know, so yeah, we exported a page query and right. we're actually going to convert this to a static query. Oh, okay. That's easy. I know how to do that. Or I did know how to do that. So hold on. 
Let's see if I can remember this. Again, it's in the tutorial docs that I wrote and I won't remember. So you know what? This is when you have a developer journal, also known <laughs> as the live internet, and you go and steal your own stuff Perfect. from the internet. <laughs> uh, using Gatsby image with your site. This is what we're talking about. Uh, okay, hold on. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Image fragments. YAML rendering image static query. Woohoo. And this is like using a very, very similar thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to just going to take this, which should go inside of this. And then a comma, I think. Wait, no, maybe not. Okay. And then we're going to steal this. Do, 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 do. Next. Get rid of all of you. Yeah. Yep. And then make sure you import use static query. Oh, that might be helpful. Is that inside? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now. <laughs> yes, uh, write you content can... so you can steal it from yourself. Very much a thing. <laughs> and then you can drop on line five. Um, you're not going to get a data prop anymore. So you're, you're oh, just moving just... that. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You need that one. But on line five, instead of getting a data prop oh, in the React yeah. component. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So now, finger, I mean, you know, fingers and toes crossed, this should, this should work now. Should I recompile or should we just try? Uh, yeah, I would stop and restart. <gasps> hey oh. Did it do it? Oh, it did it. Oh, Look at my that. gosh. So. Um, this is like black magic. And so what's really cool about this too is like, so uh, we've only got, well, we've got the, we got a little time. We can, we can play with some stuff here. Um, let's actually do, uh, well, okay. At this point, we're at a little bit of a crossroads because there are a lot of different directions we can go. So direction one would be, we can play with the data types. And because um, right now what'll happen is if somebody installs this theme, it's going to throw errors if they don't have speaking events created. So yes. um, there are a couple ways to approach that. Like the the way that we encourage is to define data type. So you just like define the schema so that it will just return null instead of returning an error or getting an error. Mm -hmm. um, so we could do that. We could do the schema customization stuff and and kind of get into some some fun GraphQL customizations. Um, another thing we could do is we could look at um, making, we could look at like how you might override different pieces of this. So breaking that speaking event component into smaller components into so that you can own. shadow things. Which I really should do at some point. Yeah, I mean, uh. well, it's, so these are all kinds of things that like, None of them are strictly required, right? Because you right. could ship this and say, this is a component that does what it does. You need to put a, a file here or else it's going to break. And that's, you know, kind of like, is what it is. I like the idea that if we included in our theme, like if we broke this down more and we included in our theme, one of these as like a sub block that anyone could use that anywhere on any site they might make, mm -hmm. which I think is probably... I mean, I think plenty of people might have speaking pages, but I like this like calling card idea. It's almost it's almost like a like like publication card or whatever for yourself or an event. So, I think we should do that. So you so basically turn the the component just for the card into something yeah. exportable. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Think? Yeah, we can do that. So, um, probably the Plus way that we want to approach the overriding that. shadowing, please. Oh. Someone voted yeah. for something else. Well, that's that's actually what we're going to do. So if we okay, if we cool. break this into a card, then yeah. we can play with shadowing it to show how to how to customize it. Cool. Let's do it. Okay, so we can create a new component in that uh, the theme source components. What do you think? Card dot js. Um, you can, card. Yeah, you could call it event, or you could call it card, or you could call it. Oh, like, I like event. That's good. Cool. Um, and then in here, you'll just kind of set it up. Can I just steal all of this and then break it down further? Sure. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> Cheating is really, really fun, y'all. Like, it's a whole thing. Okay, so this is actually what we want to do, except we want it. Oh, 
So maybe you know how to do this because I mm -hmm. actually do not. Okay. We theoretically, so we have two options, I think. Um, we can either pass the content directly into this component and then we're just rendering it like after it's already been queried or we can query it in this component, which is honestly probably less efficient if we're doing all of them together. Yeah, and there's also, um, it's a concept that uh, that we've talked about a few times um, called like the progressive disclosure of complexity. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that you would kind of look at whenever you're designing components is what's the minimum amount of things that somebody's required to know to use this piece and how can I make it so that they don't have to learn anything that they don't have to know to use this thing. So ideally it's just kind of like a drop in and you pass in the data as props because yep. that way the, um, the people are like, I mean, honestly, I would say like the, you, you, Passing in the data means that in order to customize this component, you have to be aware of the data and the component. Um, right. If you pass it's it in as fun. props, then you can customize the component without any care to where the data comes from. No, so I'm that would you. be kind of my recommendation. Uh, so we I've won't also need called this like the data layer cake. Yeah. So we won't need a query at all. We're going to pass it all in. Right. And then, and then I would just limit it down to... Uh, so it looks like on line 12 is where it starts. So you can just yeah, drop. So this it. is the loop. So mm -hmm. I can just get rid of all of this. Yep. And then thank you VS code for showing me <laughs> where all this nonsense ends. Thank you prettier for making everything nice. I love plugins. Yeah. And so then what, what I would do is like, you can do it two ways. You can pass in, like and a single prop called event and that would oh, have gosh. all of the the subfields on it um um oh you're saying event with props inside i think that probably makes sense because it means that in our loop we're just taking the full array entry right and passing it in and then you know what When you code, you replace things because it's huh. faster. Hold on. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Cool. <laughs> okay. So. I do miss the IntelliJ like refactor all. I know there's a way to do it in VS Code. It's just never worked well for me. I never remember. I, d I never used IntelliJ, so I don't know what I'm missing. Uh, so many years of my life. Okay, so hey, what's up, we Nick? Go... Thanks for joining. Hi. Oh, hi, Nick. I met Nick. He made awesome suspenders uh, with Pong that, like, you could play against him when he was at Codeland. It was phenomenal. Wait, on his suspenders? Yes. What? So, like, one side you would like press, and then it would like go all the way around, and then he had to press back, and you were playing Pong against him. Oh my God, that's around. amazing. Where is the, it was amazing. There's a video is, on Twitter. Yes, Nick. Find don't, the send video, me that video. And, and post it here. It's great. Um, all right. So now you can import the event and replace yep. in your loop. And we can try that and see if it's did working. Did I make it default? I, I don't even remember. I think you did make it default. Did. Yeah. I just stole it. So of course it's default, which means I can call it whatever I want, but I'm not that much of a crazy person. <laughs> Flash component. Oh, I'm already in components, so I should just need event.js. Cool. Okay, so if I come down here, let's make sure I'm getting rid of the right stuff. So all of this, I think. Uh, I think you've got one no, line too many. One now. extra. Yep. Okay. And then we have event. And then slash. Well, that was not what I expected it to do. It was being so Dude. helpful. That's cool. And then prop. Oh, wait. Won't it be event? Mm -hmm. Not what it and then just pass in node. Yep. There we go. Okay. And I think it's still running. So you can just look and make Good sure that work. didn't explode. Perfect. All right. This is, this is the test, right? Like if I inspect it. 
Oh, no, it, it won't change anything in the DOM tree. Never mind. This is the fun, <laughs> weird thing about React is like... Do you have the React dev Once tools? it compiles. Uh, somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. But it would probably take me a while to... I mean, we can like, we can just go in and like break something in the event to see what it... You know, just yeah, add some, let's see what happens. Something. Or remove something in the event. Let's just prove that we actually did this. Uh, okay. So we are no longer going to show an image. Let's see what happens. Boom. Excellent. So now um, we, so basically, uh, and Nick just asked, like, what's the goal of this coding session? So we took uh, this speaking section of Lori's site and converted it into a Gatsby theme so that anybody who wants to, um, anybody who wants to show their own speaking events can create a YAML file, install this theme, and then put this component anywhere on their site, and they'll get a list of cards with their speaking events. Um, so this is, uh, we just converted that to a couple components. So now this event component, you can import from anywhere and feed it any data and show that. So this would be a little bit manual at the moment. Um, we could, so the, the, the catch that we have here is that because it's a static query, we can't use any variables. So in order to use this, you would either like import that event card and then just feed it the data that it needs. Or you would like write a query on your own site and then feed that in. Um, and so, uh, okay, so Nick's asking for a, a quick Gatsby overview. It? Yeah, do it. Okay, so um, Gatsby is basically a framework on a framework. So it pulls together GraphQL and React, and it would basically be considered a Jamstack site. Um, so you have the option of using whatever backend you want or static data or whatever it is to render really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a static JSON of some form. So, okay, so yes, you could have static JSON or some sort of file to your query. And mm -hmm. if you look, if you look at one of my pages, I have it hard coded in. The reason it's beneficial to have YAML and then process it via GraphQL is one, a little bit for extensibility, um, but two, all of the images we are processing are being processed using a plugin called Gatsby Image, which makes them incredibly performant on the page. So normally, this page would be a nightmare to render. I mean, just look at all of these images. Like, this is not a performant page. But this is not going to work very well because it's a local host. Um, but just so you know, for people who don't know Lighthouse, it's on the audits pane in Google Chrome. And if you ran this on this site in production, um, you would see how performant this is, even with all of these images. So um, using Gatsby image and using some other plugins to actually process this stuff makes it easier. And the other benefit to, um, so like the GraphQL stuff that we do uh, allows you to kind of source data from any, um, any starting point, and then it gets moved into a normalized central layer. So if you have a JSON file and you also want to hook that into local images and you want to potentially like tie that to Twitter posts or Instagram or something like that, you can load all of that into the same GraphQL central area. Um, the images get processed through a plugin called Sharp, and that sets up a whole bunch of cool things. We'll generate different size images. We add the lazy loading for you. We'll do link rel prefetch, I think it is. Um, we do uh, optimized tiny versions or like traced SVGs or little things like that. So there's a ton of stuff that'll happen under the hood that you don't have to do yourself, which is very, there's very lots nice. lots of things you don't have to do yourself. You don't even um, need to pass like the result of your GraphQL query in for yourself. It just happens. Yeah, so there's there's a little bit of magic with that. So a couple things you got to learn um, about the way that Gatsby operates. Like, you know, you can use variables in page queries, which is a specific type of GraphQL query. Otherwise, like we're doing today, um, you have to use static queries, which can't take variables. Um, so there are some limitations. There are some things to learn. But ultimately, it uh, it opens up a lot of really nice developer experience workflows and um, some good shortcuts for for getting high performance really fast. Um, Gatsby is a node app. So basically Gatsby will, uh, you, it like sets up a react 
development environment. And then when you run a Gatsby build, it's going to take um, your React app and do server-side rendering and the optimizations and the data queries and all that. And then it generates a um, like static assets. So the, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you're gonna need to ship the site on a CDN like Netlify or something like that. And then it will, um, when that site hits the browser, if JavaScript is enabled, it'll rehydrate into a, um, a fully functional React app. So Gatsby is not, it's currently tied really, really closely with React, but it's not like a, it's not like built entirely with React. It's a, it's more, it's like a bunch of um, Node and Babel and, and Webpack stuff that, that makes it um, particularly powerful. Uh, you know what's bad is I'm looking at this page and I can't remember if this was also a page that I wrote. <laughs> I think the so the good thing about like being involved in a project like this is is that <laughs> over time you feel like you did all of it and none of it, right? Like I know yeah, that I helped. Right? I can't remember where I helped. You know. <laughs> uh, also, um, hey Jason, how do you pronounce J S O N? Jason, because otherwise yeah, I'm speaking so, in the third person. <laughs> yeah. So I put a, a poll out about this. It got like 5,000 votes, which is insane. <laughs> People have real opinions. I pronounce it Jason. Um, but, you know, I, I heard your like enunciation on it because I know you didn't want to make it sound like you're saying your right. own name. But I've also not heard anyone pronounce it the way you now pronounce it. So, hmm. yeah, no, don't get us started on the GIF thing. I will not. That one gets people angry. <laughs> I it doesn't make any sense to me either because the the creator of the format already already creators can be wrong, Jason. Creators can be wrong. They're absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how long we're supposed to be going. Are we supposed to be finishing, or um, do we have more? To so it's we kind of we, we usually we don't go longer than ninety minutes. So if we, I, I, we're also kind of at a good stopping point. If you want to call it at an hour, um, you know the. The thing about these is that because we come in without a plan, that also means that we're never really sure where we're done. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the world burn. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's good. It's like it's somebody who just walks by a room full like a cocktail party. They don't even go in. They just shout through the door like hot dogs are a sandwich and then they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the great debate, except that one never makes anyone mad. It just makes everyone laugh. Um, I'm fine to keep going, but I also am fine. I, I, can we pull the audience? Can we ask if there's other stuff they want us to do? Because I feel like I, we, we did some Gatsby stuff, but like we also just basically did react like refactoring, which well, is cool. and I kind of feel like that's the that's the goal, right? Is like the, this is not Gatsby's not magic and we're not we're not doing things that are are like you know, often advanced developer land. It's really just a way to organize React components and share them so that they're really easy to um, to like collaborate with, right? We want this to be reusable. Yeah. Somebody else who wants to put speaking events on their page should be able to just create a YAML file, install your plugin and, and just have it work, right? So um, that's what we did today, which I think is really, really cool. So can we do one thing before we finish? And it's not really yeah, doing do anything. It. I just kind of want to show something off. So this is this weird thing that when I was in the depths of trying to make Gatsby image work and styling things, it was like 50 comments down in a GitHub issue conversation and I found it and I used it. And now everyone who sees it is like, oh, that's really cool. Um, so this aspect ratio thing um, sizes your image for you. Nice. And so I just wanna play with it for a sec just so people can see it. Cause it's, it's kind of masterful. Like, it is basically a CSS rule. Like it's a CSS and JS rule more or less, but it is powerful. Like you, it's already scoped to whatever size you want it to be. Um, but this, the idea that you can just kind of like move this around and then yeah, that's like, it's incredible that's and that really looks cool. terrible, but <laughs> I want more people to know about it. Oh, I look like a gossip girl in that. It's like <laughs> that's super that one cool. less so, but that one. I, okay, um, somebody. who's really where nice. are my moderators? Somebody kick Jacob Silver out of this chat. You can't. That's no. We're not making my nickname. The <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't kick him. Um, 
and Ben, the power. No, ben don't you encourage have the power. people. Stop it. Um, yeah. So this is this is great. I think <laughs> like notation. Like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, you're killing me. You're all killing me. I mean, to um, be fair, working in tech, you do kind of have the greatest name. <laughs> like, you can't do anything fun with my name, but your name, except someone did make a joke about Lori Ipsum once. Ooh, that would be a good one. I mean, it, you'd have to go with, like, the full, like, Lauren, like, Lauren Ipsum. Ipsum. Right, but that's not my name, which is weird, because... A number of people have asked me if Lori is short for Lauren, which makes no sense to me because it's the same same number of syllables. syllables. Like, what would be the purpose (laughs) of that? Other than I don't like my name, which I do. So that's cool. Um, Though a lot of people when I was a kid thought I was a boy because more or less I'm named after uh, Lori from uh, Little Women, which is a dude. Oh, I didn't know. So I remember little women i remember that it exists i can't remember anything yeah. about it yeah um, well they're the the like main guy in it is named Lori, spelled the same way as my name and Lori voss like also not female Lori voss right um, right so it it's funny though i don't get it as much as uh ali spittle gets it because in various parts of the world a l i is very much male right it, well and it's so, pronounced like ali and yeah it's right yeah, yeah right yeah. and online you don't you don't see um Cool. So sorry, I just wanted to show that aspect ratio thing because it's really, it's slick and it's different. The syntax for it is a little bit different than you might expect because you Mm -hmm. actually um, do a um, spread syntax to pull out image and then you have the aspect ratio like comma inside. So it's kind of weird. It's not intuitive unless you found it somewhere. So I've tried to put it everywhere in like blog posts and tutorials and stuff. Well, and you can actually, and you can query the aspect ratio out, which is kind of interesting too. Like there, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do because the aspect ratio is actually part know. of the, yeah, if you go to the GraphQL Explorer, um, if you just want to oh, pull cool. up like localhost 8000 underscore yeah. whatever it is, under, triple it's underscore, underscore GraphQL. Underscore, underscore GraphQL. You're, you're missing a slide. You can though. tell that I wrote, oh, no, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wait, stealing more things from Lori. Hold on. Lori, Barth, Gatsby. This will come up. Wait, no, other way to cheat. Hold on. (laughs) Again, things that you wrote end up being really beneficial in the future. Which of the three is it in? Do, 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 do. No, this is getting stuff. Unknown speaking query. Okay, this is definitely supposed to be in here. I swear I wrote this down. Okay, we're going to say, we're going to laugh for a second. All right, everyone laugh at Lori. This is my lovely notebook of shame. (laughs) And this is definitely written in here with the syntax for what it is. Give me five seconds. Mm. This is really making for a compelling live stream right now as Lori looks through handwritten notes. I'm sorry, but I just like crossing things out and things stick in my brain if I use, if I write things down. And when I say it's written down, I swear it is, but like, where is it? (laughs) Okay, Lori gives up. Okay, so if you just replace, uh, you you had it, you just missed a slash. So um, locust, yeah, just add that slash. You couldn't have said that five minutes ago after I showed my embarrassing notes. <laughs> well, I, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> what I talk over you and you. Just... Um, but so, okay, so, so what's cool here is you can take any, yeah, any one of your image queries. So where did I put this? Oh, I'm in You've the wrong. You've got your thing. like your heading queries down there too somewhere. Um, but yeah, any of these. And so uh, in place of the Gatsby image sharp fluid, if mm-hmm. you want to just, um, you can just delete that. And then if you hit, I think option space, it'll show you, yeah, it shows you all the, all the things. What? And so aspect ratio is one of the things you can get. So some of this in yeah, you can actually, if to make it really easy, you can just clear everything except the image. It'll make it really easy to see. Yeah. 
But so this will show you the um, the actual aspect ratios, and then you can do things like if you do a um, a fixed query, you can set the size exactly. That's sweet. Yeah. Wait, someone's so, making fun of me for my trick to save time that took a long time. I resent uh, that. <laughs> it's okay. It's that's like I feel like that's famous last words. I'm like, ooh, let me show you a shortcut. That's never gonna go the way that I want it to. <laughs> and it's funny because I write all this stuff where I'm like, you should have a developer journal. And then of course I'm looking at like all the 50 other things that are not my like developer journal. Like this is a legit thing that I have. That's just a bunch. Nice. Of notes of my resources. And yet the stuff that I actually write that like I use later, no, nope, never goes in there. Why would I reference myself? That makes sense. And I, I also feel like there's a huge, like I, I take notes sometimes and I just write things down. Like, like I just write down, let's see, I've got some good ones in here. I wrote down three JS, no context. I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> um, or like teach recursion. Don't know why I wrote that either. <laughs> I have started as gatekeeping, like underlined here. And this is for some talk on communication. No idea what I meant. It's fine. <laughs> oh, fixed, fixed versus fluid. Okay. So, um, I mean, there are docs on this, uh, but basically fixed is if it's almost like, I mean, grid versus flex is actually a bad analogy for this, but the idea is, you know, what size your image is always supposed to be. And fluid is it's probably expanding or retracting or like reacting to the window that it's in. And therefore you want it to process in a way that allows for it to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, Twitch and live coding trolling is mainly sarcasm. I mean, my entire life is mainly sarcasm. So I'm from New England. I can't help myself. <laughs> um, and, and more specifically, like the the rule of the, kind of the, the general guideline I use for fixed versus fluid is fluid is responsive. It's going to resize to the container that's in. Um, fixed is always going to be. So if you set a fixed image to 200 by 200, no matter what the browser resolution is, any of that, that image is always going to be 200 by 200. So my general usage is like, hey, let's um, let's do profile images or like avatars as fixed images because they're usually small. Um, almost everything else I do is fluid. So that's a that's a pretty standard approach. Yeah. Um, Most that, all of my stuff is fluid. Oh, this is another fun gotcha. And again, it's in all like the posts I did on this. If you f change from fixed to fluid, you're going to get a really not helpful error <laughs> message um, that shows up. I literally have a picture of this using Gatsby image. Hold on. Where's the error? Again, this is like all on this site, so you can look this up. But there is a picture we have of an error which should jump out. There we go. Cannot read property source of undefined and be in image cache, which is the most misleading thing ever. Because I was like, oh, it's cached. It still thinks it's looking for a fix. It's looking for. No, it was one of two things. So it was either I had changed this to be fluid, but I hadn't changed this mm. or I hadn't changed. Hold on. Now it's split up, right? Um, or I hadn't changed. Okay, this is a bad example, but normally when it's not using an aspect ratio, let me show you another example. Um, so normally it's, again, this is also using an aspect <laughs> ratio. One of well, these the, the is image has like a fixed and fluid prop. And so if you right. mismatch those props, yeah. This is what I'm trying to show, which is somewhere. <laughs> um, so I had missed one of those. And this is the error that you get which is not super like descriptive. So just keep that in mind. The other really bad error that you might get, which I think I might've removed from this cause it was kind of getting away from the point um, is there's can't query like all speaking YAML or whatever your YAML file is. There's like 50 ways to trigger that. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is that your the structure of your internal query does not match the file that you're looking for. So like you've changed one without changing the other. Mm -hmm. um, another way to do it is if you if your config is not set up so that it can see the directory that your YAML file is in. And yet another one is if you accidentally fat finger your YAML 
file so that there is nothing called dot y a m l with the title speaking and therefore it's like what are you looking for Lori? you're an idiot um, but there's a bunch of ways to trigger that so my big thing is every time i write tutorials and stuff i throw in all my errors because i guarantee you i didn't do it right the first time and you're not going to either <laughs> i love we're getting uh like fine like this is throwing me back to my design days of like you know uh v1 final v1 final final v1 final final actually final <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, so so they uh kelly vaughn was asking people to share their like most common or like most entertaining git commit messages and mine is 99.9 percent .9 of the time on my personal site not when i'm collaborating with other people please work <laughs> <laughs> I feel like mine is, is like, it's either a comment that I'll hide in my code or it's something that I commit that's just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry when I've done. Oh so yeah. <laughs> um, there, I was working on a project with like very aggressive linter rules with a style guy or check style. And you could only, and running it locally on your computer was like weirdly a long process to test it. So you would hope that your IDE was catching all of them. And right. if it wasn't, you would get an error. And so I swear I had 50 commits in a row that were fixing check style, fixing check style again. Damn it. Come on, check style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. Minus M -A -S -F. <laughs> Good. Quick commit message from angry devs. I mean, I, you could write a book of like really amusing commit logs. I'm sure of it. Yeah. There's some, there, I, there's a whole Twitter account uh, dedicated to like, it's called like dev swearing or something like that. It's just like angry commit messages. Um, but with that being said, I think we've hit a good stopping point here. <laughs> so like we've definitely moved from code to stand up <laughs> now. Uh, and while I could probably do this all day, I think uh, we should we should probably yeah. wrap it up. I think quit while we're ahead. We've got we've got a couple yeah. good jokes. I think I'm I'm out of jokes. So um, yeah, we can only make so many twinsy jokes, right? Like ex exactly. So. Um, Lori, if you want to pull up your browser, do you want to show us a couple places where people can uh, find you? Oh, yeah, sure. So um, you've got my site, which we were playing around with. Um, but if you actually want to find what, me. What is that site without when oh, it's not localhost? Uh, that would be helpful. So let's show the actual <laughs> site. LoriUntech.com, um, which apparently is going to take a second to load. But yeah, that's me. Um, I'm on Twitter as LoriUntech. Um, I post blogs on 10 milesquarecom which is my company that I work for. So you'll see me. Um, and I cross post all of those to dev.2 as well. And they're all linked from my site. So like there's a bunch of, hold on, this is me. This is the one place I have a different photo. What? <laughs> um, but it's still me. Uh, but yeah. I'm around and I'm on Twitter a lot. So if you want to make jokes at me, that's cool. I'm down. perfect. <laughs> yeah, definitely go follow Lori on Twitter. She's a lot of fun on there. Um, with that being said, I think we're going to wrap it up. Please uh, follow and subscribe to the Twitch chat, uh, twitch.tv slash Jay Langsdorf. And I have a whole bunch of good stuff coming up um, later this week. We're doing something that I've just blanked on now that I actually have to. You're doing things. Kurt Kempel, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got Kurt Kempel is on Kurt Thursday. Is awesome. Um, so that one's gonna be oh no, no, no. So that's that's next Thursday. This Thursday I've got Grant Glidewell on. We're going to oh. do a um a Gatsby plus Drupal website, which is gonna be really fun. And then the following Monday, I've got Mikhail Novikov on. We're going to do advanced GraphQL techniques. That's going to be intense. It's going to be a lot of fun. Do some really, really cool stuff. And then Monday, I'm actually going to make it a double header. Kelly Vaughn is going to come on, and we're going to set on set up uh, Shopify. Shop? No, well, actually, we're going to do that one later. We're going to set up webhooks. Okay. So we're going to do like she wants scheduled posting, right? So we're going to figure out a way to set up a cron job and some webhooks so that she can say, "I want this post to go live at this time." and um and rebuild then so that should be a lot of fun but definitely yeah subscribe uh this video will be posted to youtube once it's done so you can find me on youtube and uh and schedule that there so yeah we really appreciate you coming on Lori. thank you so much for your time today um any parting Absolutely. words before we wrap it up 
Um, I always like put at the bottom of my posts, like if you liked this, read this. So if you liked this live stream of comedy, you should probably watch Kelly Vaughn. She's really funny. So there you go. It's probably going to be similar. Just cracking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm really be prepared, excited. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, cool. Everyone. Lori, thank you so much. Everybody. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. How do I outro? Outro, outro.